Today, I'm catching up with Lockie Morrison on his farm in Imberley, where we're going to take a look at some of the drainage solutions he's implemented. Lockie runs a mixed enterprise farming operation of both cropping and sheep on 1,800 hectares. Like many farmers in the area, Lockie has faced numerous issues that have arisen with waterlogging and has decided to tackle it in a number of ways. All right, Lockie, we've come out to one of your paddocks on your farm. Can you tell me a bit about the waterlogging that you experience in this paddock? Yeah, so we've, uh, this is a lease block, and, um, and so I've been leasing this for four years now. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been battling waterlogging here since, since we started, and my man who leased it previously was also battling waterlogging. Intergenerational <laughs> waterlogging. Exactly right, exactly right. Um, and so it all, but it all came to a head here where, um, uh, two years ago, we had a, um, a two and a half ton wheat crop, which um, which was just all issues with water logging, um, and we found as well with the water logging that we can't get our weed control right either, and um, and so it just became an absolute mess. So we sort of had to try and do something. So is the water logging from like the soil, or is it the rainfall, or the fall, or is it just a combination of a bit of everything? Yeah, so it's a, it's def, definitely a wet area, and um, and you know you don't have to go too far south to get into into beef and then straight into dairy. So yeah, you know, it's it's def, definitely a wet area. We're definitely towards the edge of cropping. The soil is clayish. It's not, but it's not crazy heavy. Yeah. Um, but but it's it's quite it's quite a flat farm, and so and so the water was getting caught up as well. So it's mainly 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 a lot of rain and and nowhere for the rain to go. Yeah, that's fair enough. So once you started sort of realising that you can't work on a two and a half ton uh, wheat crop, what was the plan for implementing some, some form of drainage to help you with it all? Yeah, the, co the conversation has always been about whether or not, whether or not to implement beds in a drainage program. It's all, it's, it, you kind of have to go, I think like either the whole way or not, especially in, in areas like this. Um, and really is actually that that failed wheat crop was actually a bit of the, the saviour to say like to, it was a real is a real in or out point for us. Yeah. Um, and so um, so, you know, because previously, previously, when you're sort of growing around that five ton, that sort of thing, you're getting not bad results and maybe and, and slightly profitable. Mm. But um, and so it makes it hard to to actually jump in and um, and go and go with a drainage project but yeah it, it's it's been in the back of the mind and you know and a lot of people around this district are going that way um but yeah just didn't have the confidence to go and implement until we really failed but yeah so now you've got you've got the confidence yeah how did you decide if you're going to do it yourself or get a contractor in to do it or was it a bit of a minefield to negotiate where the sort of starting point to getting it all going was it's really easy when you don't have any of the gear <laughs> Because, because, and as well, and as well, um, so, so we just went straight, straight to contractors for the whole lot, um, other than some paddock brett work that we did. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, we, we don't, we don't have any deep ripping gear or any, or any bed formers or drainage gear and all, or all that sort of thing. The thing is that as well, that once you make the decision that you want to go, and once you know, once you've got in your mind that you're losing money every year that you don't have it, yeah. you've got to go and do it. Yeah. Um, and so we had a pretty stressful summer um, that year trying to line it all up, but we did, we did just, just get there. Um, and so, you know, cause um, you've got it, you've got to first, you've got to first get it mapped. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's got to go to a, got to go to a, um, a uh, drainage consultant, someone, a designer, yeah. a designer, and then you've got to prepare the paddock, burn it, rip it, disc it. Just a few things. <laughs> yeah, and then and then um, and and then you can get the get the former, the um, laser bucket in the GPS bucket in. Did you plan to do it paddock by paddock, or do you have to do a whole farm plan about how that water's moving? Like, what? How did it work on your farm for planning each each stage? This farm this farm doesn't have any fences, so there's yeah. so there's about a thousand acres here in one paddock, and yeah, so okay. we just did it in one paddock. There are so many things that hold you back from making the right decision 
from saying, you know, we've got to do drainage. And then the next thing is you go, oh, well, then I have to do the whole, the whole farm plan and that sort of yeah. thing. So really it's just, it's just to make a start, I reckon. Even, even the designs are only, a, are only an est estimation. And so if you try and, if you were to do it across a whole farm, I'm not sure whether, I'm not sure whether that'd be the best way to go. I think to just get started and see what happens there. See what happens, a bit mm. of experimentation. Yeah, and cause you can't actually, you can't actually model exactly how much water's gonna run off. Yeah. And you don't actually know once it goes down there, how quickly it's gonna go and is it gonna spoon out back here and that sort of thing. Mm. And you've only got so much time and money over that summer period. So you can only do so many projects. Mm. So yeah, I don't know personally whether the whole farm aspect is the way to go, other than here, which was just one paddock, one farm. Which is big enough to almost be a farm in itself. Exactly right, yeah. exactly right. I guess the big question is what sort of drainage did you implement in the end after you'd had all these discussions and reached out to contractors? What was the decision for this paddock? Spoon drains throughout the paddock in the low lying areas and at the headlands mm -hmm. um, uh, in, in cooperation with raised beds yeah. feeding those drains um, we did um, we did down the end here we have we have a couple of spots where water runs into into the neighbors and runs back out mm -hmm. back into us or back somewhere else and um, and we made the decision to just run all the water the whole way down our farm and keep keep it all within ourselves yeah. we had a couple of conversations with neighbors which all went really yeah, well okay. it's really important that you don't just muck someone else up. I can imagine you could do a bit of damage. <laughs> yeah, exa exactly right. Because we're pumping a lot of water off this farm that wasn't pumping off before. Yeah. Um, so that means that some some neighbours will do a bit better, and some neighbours will um, uh, will end up with a lot more water. We decided to go the full hog with um, with raised beds, so so that these so that these spoon drains that are out in the paddocks, and same with that excavator drain, it was on a GPS. So they're two centimetre accurate actually um, to actually make sure the water's moved. Yeah, okay. So you really identified that the spoon drains and the raised beds would work well in conjunction with each other. The idea is that they would feed in, I suppose, that water comes off the raised beds and in out the drains. Yeah, exactly right. And and we had some we did have some areas that didn't make it into beds and yeah. um, and that was because it was just too wet at the time and we hadn't got the exit points done yet so all the water was building up and, and so there are some parts with with no raised beds uh, so on the left hand side there's a fair, there's a fair amount of slope here but you can see on the right hand side without beds that the crop still died yeah so it didn't matter that didn't matter that we got the drains in the right spot didn't matter that we got slope and fall the crop still died that's not the case everywhere but for here the amount of rainfall that we get here, this just clearly shows to me that we need raised beds. Yeah, it's like a perfectly clear cut image of how it works for you and why. So the, ra the raised beds definitely work, definitely work, the, you know, they're just like they're big three metre garden beds um, that then um, all the water goes into the furrows and, and then leads it down into these drains. We got this um, mapped by by a crew that um, that used they just used a buggy, mm -hmm. um, and they also did an AM thirty eight or something <laughs> something like that on soil types, which which um, uh, wasn't that useful. But um, the issue with the, with the data that we found that they had was that um, they only mapped every thirty six meters. Mm -hmm. Thirty six meters is a is a long way, and to and so. And so to get an average from here to there, to there, to there, in a 36 metre around here, has meant that you missed all the, all the hollows. Yeah. So we didn't get a good picture on that. It, do, it didn't matter. We still got our 90% job and it still worked fine. So it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. But, the, but the better data you've got, the, the better it is. And so you really need someone that's working with your um, end designer. Of the, of the drainage design yep. um, because uh, because they ne and they need to be experts in it but yeah as I said the bed the beds were a no-brainer here. How long do you expect the beds and spoon drains to last before you might have to you know take out all the stuff in them or rebuild the beds? It's a 
Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll the, get out the crystal yeah. ball, shall I? Yeah, the theory, the theory with the spoon drains is that is that they are graded and to with a with a um, low gradient. So that, so the water that runs through them shouldn't be pumping. Yeah. As in it should just be, and so it shouldn't be eroding because that is, and we have found a couple of issues with that where there is some erosion in the drains. The beds I'm led to believe will last us five years. Okay. Um, and and those drains will probably need a touch up at that same time as well. But you've already done all the hard work and and all the hard work as well in the laser bucket work is done too. So it's very it's a pretty quick and easy job for them. Um, yeah, so I'm not I'm not too concerned about that. Yeah. Oh well, it sounds like I it's working not. for you. So <laughs> yeah. fingers crossed that it, yeah. they hold on for yeah. for as long as you're hoping. Yeah. Being in the excavator drain, this is obviously the last sort of part of the story. How does it all fit together? Uh, so, the, so the water comes off the paddock through the beds and into the spoon drains and then, and then drains down into here into this excavator drain which runs along the whole, um, along the whole eastern boundary. Yeah. So it captures, it captures all the water um, and keeps, keeps most of the farm water off our neighbours mm -hmm. and goes straight down into a channel down the bottom. Was it excavated deep or was it shallow? Like how did we, you decide how deep it was going to be, I suppose? Yeah, so same thing, it came straight from, straight from the um, drainage design, yeah. which was all, so, so this was done with a GPS excavator. So the excavator can still dig to two centimetre accuracy. Wow. And they only did an excavator, they only used an excavator along the edge here because there were a lot of rocks. Yeah, okay. Um, and if there weren't a lot of rocks along here, and because it gets quite deep in some spots, um, then they would have just used that bucket and been able to drop all this fill out into the holes. Obviously a lot of moving parts of this and different variations on the drainage. What were the logistics like for coordinating them all together? There was a lot to bring together. Yeah. And, um, and there's not a lot of info out there on, on what you actually need to do. If you want to actually solve the problem, you've actually got to do it properly mm. and you can't just um, get get a surveyor to come and then and then dig your drains with your put your grader in or what whatever I, I really think that you've got to do it properly so the first thing was to to tee up a drainage designer mm -hmm. talk to them who then suggested that we then need the data yeah that design process takes a long time and it's, it's actually very complicated unfortunately it's not spit into a computer and then and then spit Just out get a result answer. yeah yeah because because the designers the designers um design it so that you can actually use it as a farm all the all the drains are designed so that so that when you're in a 36 meter um, sprayer that you're not crossing any drains on an angle so they actually and and so they work with you to actually make sure that you've got the direction of the beds right so that you have to, so that you don't have to do as, as many drains as well like it's customized to your farm exactly it's not right. just like they're applying a standard way that they can do it it's make sure it aligns with where your implements and your widths exactly right and so you know we've got we've got in some in some rises as well um, some areas where there's no beds so that you can so chase bins and mm -hmm. things can turn around during harvest so it's really important to to get a professional to do it so that you can get the logistics right. So then you need to get the paddock prep done. Mm -hmm. The paddock prep will usually involve a deep ripping and then a disking yep. to, to then just um, deal with all the clumps and settle it all back down. Um, of course, before that, which we're, we were, in, we're in a wheat stubble, which meant that we also had to burn it. So, so it, all, it all happened um, pretty quickly and, and right at the start of the sowing window. So, so in, in, in April, we burnt it and then we couldn't get hold of a um, deep ripping contractor. So we instead used, um, used a chisel plow. Yeah, okay. And then our little four meter speed disc to, to do the lot. So it was, a bit, that, it was a big project from that point of view. Yeah. We didn't get the deep ripping um, 
that we would have liked. Like the chisel plough got some, but not down to that 45. Yeah, that you're looking for. But in that process, you bring up a lot of rocks. Especially in this area, yeah. yeah. So, so then, so then you got to pick up all the rocks because the bed formers hate rocks. Yes. You don't have to rip and disc it for the drains. Okay. They will do it themselves, mm -hmm. and they're happy to work with um, in stubble as well. Yeah. So that's okay. You have to have a clean paddock, so it has to, has to be burnt, mm -hmm. or they can work in like a bean stubble. Yeah. Canola stubble is pretty hard work. Yeah. I could so. imagine. So, um, and and so. The issue that we ran into before with not having the beds done was was where we're trying to um, we were trying to get it all done in May. We were really lucky in January. In January it was so wet you couldn't get a pad you couldn't get a um, not what you anticipated in, in January, is it? No. No, no, it was a it was a it was a disaster in the in the whiting. But we did we did manage to so in so we got it all wrapped up. Uh, in mid-May. All systems go. It was a crazy time. As I said before, once we got that terrible result, and um, and because because we do lease it as well, you've only got so many opportunities to make the money. And once you know that, once you feel like you're losing money, you got to go. Yeah. And with the year that we ended up having, we're so fortunate that we had had them in. The million-dollar question then. Mm. After all of this tight turnaround, what results have you been seeing, and and what are your thoughts so far? What we did see is that in a year, in a year where um, fibre beans across the across the district failed mm -hmm. due to a, due to a, a range of issues, but waterlogging doesn't help when you're trying to combat disease. No. And so, you know, so we did manage to grow a three and a half ton fibre fibre bean crop. The canola crop that we had we had in this year, it probably did one and a half tons, but I can guarantee it would have done half a ton if we didn't have it in. Yeah, you can convince yourself of whatever you want, but I'm sure that we paid it back. If not in this year, then we'll have it paid back in the second year. Yeah. There's other added benefits too. So it's not ju it's not just that year one gross margin or the five year gross margin on that. It's not just I oh I didn't get didn't have water logging, so I was able to on average grow an extra ton. Mm -hmm. The amount of times that we'd have a double break in here. You know, you grow your canola and it all gets waterlogged and dies and gets full of ryegrass, and you grow your beans and they all die and get full of ryegrass. Then you're backed in the third year trying to grow some, trying to grow some wheat, and it's all full of ryegrass. It puts so much pressure on your um, on your chemicals. Having having a proper canopy of canola to actually help combat the weeds as well. It's it's just another added benefit that your rotations actually work. You're, so you're getting that the your while you're solving the waterlogging and getting the benefit in the grain yield, you're actually finding that there's been other benefits to putting it in as well, I suppose, which helps with the how hard it's been for you to get everything done, that it's been worthwhile in a number of aspects, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I, and, and, and it was hard because we tried to do it in one summer. Yes. Because we, we finished harvest in the middle of January and then we're trying to we're trying to get everything else organised. While well, we're trying to organise lease details as well and all that sort of thing, so it was hard because we didn't have any time. But if you get on top of it and come up with a plan, and actually and and start to get proactive, and line up those contractors a long way out, it's really easy. We've got another drainage project going on this year, so we're going ahead with um, with some more over at um, Deverney, mm -hmm. um, and and it was so frustrating. Uh, after having seen such good results here, it's so frustrating not having it already done. Yes. Because also, and in that, in those um, added benefits, also over there we had we had a red weight over there that um, that we couldn't put a PGR on because it was waterlogged and yellow. But so instead, what happened is that is it got through the water logging and then all lodged. Yes. So if you have your water logging sorted, you can get your PGRs on, you get your fungicides on. You don't have to do. You don't have to deal with um, with massive big wheel ruts because you're out there in the or water. Or getting bogged. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. right. There are just so many other so many other benefits. Your actual soil health benefits from not spending six months of the year full of water, yeah. um, anaerobic conditions, all that sort of stuff. It, there are just so many other benefits. Oh, that's really good to hear that you're getting more than just the the grain yield because I think that's talked about a lot. Is the grain yield the grain yield that you know, when you're outlaying so much money, hundreds of dollars a hectare, it's nice to see that there are other benefits for farmers when they've they've put in that system. Yeah, and all those things, weed control, you know, PGRs, you know, your fungicides, all that sort of stuff, it all does equal grain yield, but it's just not direct. It's not 
that section of my canola died. Yeah. And so if I got that back, I would get, you know, three tons times 10 hectares equals whatever. You know, yeah. it's, not, it's not as simple as that. There are extra benefits on top, which mean that if you're trying to justify it, and that you can get anywhere near justifying it on paper, then it's just, it becomes a no brainer. Yeah, definitely. Are there other ways you think you'll mitigate the water logging on your farm or do you think this is what works predominantly for you guys? We tr we've, we've tried, we've tried some other, some other things. So like that two and a half ton wheat crop, you know, we, we sowed a crock into a full moisture profile in the end of March. You know, trying to get some, some longer season wheats growing for longer to try and use the um, moisture in the soil for longer. Yeah. To try and have less time being waterlogged. Mm -hmm. Certainly helps, but doesn't, doesn't solve it. Before you go to any project, you've got to make sure that the drainage is actually the problem. Yes. So you've got to make sure that you've got your time of sowing right. So you're not trying to sow the back end of June. <laughs> And yep. it just is wet. Yep. Um, but, you know, I think we found that pushing into March was maybe a bit too early. I think what we found, though, as well, is that, you know, we sowed beans and canola um, in the middle of May. That's not ideal, but it would have been less ideal if we didn't do it at all. Exactly. But, yeah, so, yeah, I'm, there, there are other ways around it, but none of them solve it like for water long. Like this has for you guys. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Well, it's been really nice, lucky for you to show me around your property and taking a look at the drainage work. There's certainly a lot of options out there, so it's nice to see how three of them have, I suppose, have worked for you and, and you're seeing the results and the added benefits of just aside from a better return on the grain reel. So thank you so much for having me out today and it's been great. Absolute pleasure, Greta, anytime. <laughs>